You know how method actors always go a little bit weird when it comes to really getting into the perfect state of mind for a role? Well, turns out there's plenty of directors out there that are just as bad. The difference being that these guys are waving a fat paycheck in front of everyone to get exactly what they want out of their movies. From years of prop making that never sees the light of day to getting actors to actually fight each other for that true Maybelline freshly pummeled look. Dance, monkey, dance. When it comes to executing the perfect cinematic vision on our screens, there's very little that goes unnoticed by our business beloved screen dictators, and plenty of mind-blowing effort put into even the most minuscule of moments on screen. With that in mind, I'm Ash from What Culture, and these are eight completely pointless movie details that will blow your mind. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Eight. Wes Anderson created hundreds of fictitious paper props never seen on screen. Arguably one of the most precise directors in modern cinema, Wes Anderson is allowed to be a bit extra sometimes. Considering how beautifully his sets and cinematography come together, his innate colourful style and his creation of whimsical cinematic fairy tales, it's only fair that he's picky, which the Grand Budapest Hotel's graphic designer can attest to more than anyone. Tasked to create no less than 30 of every paper prop both on screen and off, the designer went to ridiculous lengths to ensure the precise replication of each of Zabrowska's charming pages. From from bloodstained letters to imaginary currency. Wes Anderson himself made newspapers that would never be caught on camera and wrote out all of their articles, titling them as Transalpine Yodel, The Daily Facts and The Continental Drift, each with their own links to the story and world-building content to further the immersion of his fictional country for none other than the pleasure of those on set. 7. Shia LaBeouf went a bit too method in Fury Firstly, he didn't bathe at all whilst filming went on. Deciding that because his character wouldn't have access to washing himself, he wouldn't either, it's exactly as stinky as it sounds. Considering the shoot was on for months without LaBeouf doing so much as run a wet wipe around his grotty bits. This wasn't even the only unpleasant way he got himself riled up for the role, as he also had a tooth removed by a back alley dentist who didn't ask many questions, in another of his particularly pointless choices. LaBeouf was known to cut his own face and reopen the injuries instead of undergoing makeup every day, but wasn't even the most intense person on set. The director himself made the cast have fist fights throughout filming to improve intimacy. This whole thing sounds a bit of a mess, really. 6. Ed Harris painted all the artwork in Pollock. Portraying a famous figure on film comes with its hardships. Whether it's throwing everything you love into the abyss to really capture the loss in the pianist, or even the trauma of doing a load of drugs and beautiful people to get into the zone in Wolf of Wall Street. Actors often go that extra mile to be true to their real-life counterparts. Ed Harris is no different, entertaining his obsession with Jackson Pollock by teaching himself the intricacies of drip painting over a whopping 10-year period. Deciding some years ago he wanted to be the one to bring the painter's story to life, Harris underwent extensive periods of learning his particular style and ended up painting all the pictures on set himself. Considering Pollock's work appears as a splat attack, it's amazing he spent 10 years doing what a good 10 seconds of rattling paint cans could have achieved. Still though, it's impressive. 5. It was all work and no play in The Shining Stanley Kubrick is known for being a bit over the top on his film sets, drawing everything out in painstaking detail for the perfect shot. Shelley Duvall felt this probably the most during filming of The Shining, where she was forced to redo the bat swinging scene over 120 times in a row to get just the right amount of hysteria on screen. Jeez. Another suffering at the hands of the director's plentiful meticulousness is his probably very tired assistant. Forced to write out all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Over and over again, he sent her down the same rabbit hole Jack Torrance fell into. But in real life, for months, to get hundreds of unique pages to be used within the movie. One can only hope he didn't make her do the same for the foreign language releases or todo el trabajo y nada de juego hace que Jack se un chico aburrido. Take that, GCSE Spanish. 4. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire made real Quidditch paraphernalia. How cool would it be to see an entire booklet outlining the competitive sport of catching magical balls on sweeping utensils with information on its individual players and attacking formations and the World Cup's importance with everything from sponsors to drink adverts in the Harry Potter universe? Maybe not that cool, actually, on second thoughts. But one does exist, and it's a lot more detailed than my poor description makes it out to be. 
Now, if only it contained an explanation of the offside rule. Despite its wonderful dive into the world of Quidditch, these pamphlets are only in shot once, maybe twice, in the entirety of the movie. And all you can see is some blurry paper excitedly wafting about in the far background. There's surely a graphic designer out there ready to become the next Voldemort after tearing all their hair out. And maybe their nose off. 3. Akira Kurosawa demanded thousands of cups of tea. Even more committed to the cause than Kubrick, Akira Kurosawa is the master of authenticity and is the sort of guy that absolutely lives for those ridiculous hipster cafes that serve your coffee deconstructed into three different parts and charges 18 times more for it. Yeah, I see you. And I raise you one watery Asda cafe cup right back at you. Who's winning now? Probably Kurosawa still. His film Redbeard in particular takes the whole grain organic raisin stuffed biscuit in this case, with whole rooms of his sets flush with expensive props sourced from the correct 19th century time period. If you couldn't find it, then wood from the time was found instead and it would be built, or aged appropriately to reflect its wear through the ages. Teacups weren't suitable for filming until hundreds of litres of hot drinks had been passed through them. Cupboards were filled with items never seen or mentioned on set, and no matter how many lines an actor had, there was a complete dossier on their backstory that had to be memorised. There's dedicated, then there's being just plain difficult. 2. Every piece of armour in Lord of the Rings has a backstory. If you thought J.R.R. Tolkien liked his details, well, you'd be right, as he's known for squeezing his books so full of intricate moments that exactly three films can be made from even the shortest novella. Looking at you, The Hobbit. The films are no different, with a crazed Peter Jackson drawing on a world full of rich, beautiful content ripe for the taking. From the purpose-built village of hobbit holes to each handcrafted piece of armour stuck to over 40,000 orcs. Turning Hollywood costume designers into Dungeons & Dragons level cosplay obsessives, they made custom designed helmets and armour sets to replicate orcish standing within their culture. Mixtures of fabrics, metals and shapes were meticulously put together for each ugly bastard on the battlefield, going as far as a hand makes six miles of chainmail over two Two years that's barely visible on screen. 1. 2001 A Space Odyssey could have actually been in space. Of course, Kubrick appears twice on this list, as he never really learned when to leave things well enough alone. Considering the set of 2001 A Space Odyssey was utilised entirely within Earth's orbit, it seems a little much that the revered director demanded that everything purpose-built for his movie be fully functional as if it were actually on the moon. Considering one of his scenes takes place on said floating rock lovingly recreated in Hollywood, he might as well have just gone there really since everything would work. He's been blamed for faking the moon landing, but hey, maybe he actually did get there and filmed 2001 and we've had it backwards the entire time. Just to rub salt in the wounds of all these poor set builders, he then had everything destroyed so nothing could be used in lesser sci-fi films. So that's our list. What other film trivia proves to be completely pointless? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.